Hi HL students, so this video is to help you understand the criteria that you're being marked on uh, when you approach your solo theatre report and solo theatre performance as well. So let's take a look. So criterion A, this is about the theorist, the selected aspect um, or convention of your theory and the overall context of the theorist. So in this section, this criterion asks you to explain the context of your theorist, so that's their background and what they've contributed to theatre as a whole, and also explain the particular aspect or convention that you've chosen from this theorist's theory, okay? So this is a top tip that's come from the IB, um, and what's important in this section is that you're not supposed to use criterion A to discuss the context of your theory. I want to know about the context of your theorist, their particular background, um, and anything that happens in their life. It's not a whole biography of where they were born and who they were married to, but perhaps you will talk about any life experiences that have to do with what they contributed to their life in theatre, okay? So only tell me aspects um, of their life story that relate specifically to what they contributed to the theatre world. If something uh, significant has ha had happened in their life that impacted why they chose to have the theatrical vision that they had, then you can absolutely talk about that. But we don't want to know about every single thing that happened in this theorist's life if it's irrelevant to theatre, okay? So the other part is that it's crucial that you clearly identify explicitly which selected aspect of your theory that you are going to use in your performance. So which convention perhaps are you using? What happens and what has happened in the past is that some students haven't really made this explicit um, and or they failed to identify a particular theory, they just use the theorist's work as a whole. Um, and what happens is that has a really big domino effect on the rest of your task because this is about you being able to showcase one particular performance aspect or uh, convention in performance and you need to be able to uh, talk about how you practically explored that, the that aspect of the theory, and you need to be able to evaluate how successful you were at showcasing that in performance. So if you don't explicitly say, I am going to explore this aspect from this theory, then you will not do well in criterion A, B, or, or D. So this is straight from the criterion A, uh, descriptors in the guide and you can see that we, we're using those command terms again from IB Theatre. So lists, outlines, describes and explains. Now let's have a look at an example of uh, student work that's quite effective. So clearly stating the chosen aspect of your theory, the easiest way to do that is to literally put it as a heading um, in your part A, okay? So chosen aspect of the theory, they've used projection as a transformative element within multimedia, which is Lepage, okay? Images are also a really useful way, um, year 12, of further communicating that meaning within the report. So if you have a particular image that showcases um, the aspect of the theory, put it in there. And of course, you can see that they have labelled it figure two and referenced and put a caption accordingly as well. Um, have a look at this student's, a, a snippet anyway of this student's context that they've written about their chosen theorist. So you can see they're giving some biographical information about the particular chosen practitioner. But there's good context as well about the, um, the background of this person and also what that person has contributed to the particular theatre style. Okay, now let's talk about academic research because criterion A is really about your research and your ability to put that together and take the most significant parts of your research out uh, to communicate and explain the context of your theorist and explain the theory and the aspect you've chosen. So you need to effectively support your work with a range of appropriate and relevant sources. What that means is that you should be using, as I've mentioned in video one, primary and secondary sources. And when we talk about primary sources, we are talking about the theorist's own published work 
or perhaps recorded words that have come straight from that theorist's mouth. It could be a documentary, it might be an interview, it can be quotes that were found in a book um, specifically written by that person um, or a book that has been written about that person and about the theorist would then be a secondary source, okay? So if you find anything that's written about Augusto Boal, for example, but Boal doesn't actually say anything, well, then that is a secondary source that is evaluating him and his work, okay? So suitability and range of the sources. This is um, taken straight from, from criterion A, okay? And it really depends on your theorist because you might have a theorist who was around um, at a time where much of what they said was recorded, either in uh, documentaries or videos or interviews, or perhaps they wrote a book themselves. So you might be able to find lots and lots and lots of resources um, and primary resources where the theorist actually talks about their vision and their ideas. Other theorists, I guess, may not have um, as much in terms of the primary sources. There may only be a few quotes from that particular theorist. Um, but there should be enough there of a balance between your primary and your secondary sources, okay? All sources must be cited. This is nothing new in IB. As an IB student, you know that we use at AIS APA referencing, okay? So you should be using the APA referencing, and that means that if you're taking images that aren't your own or you're quoting something that you are citing that as well in APA reference style. Um, you've got the obvious sources Year 12, this should be pretty easy for you having done the extended essay. So books, websites, videos, um, if there's DVDs, articles. It might also be um, a live lecture that's given by the theorist, um, an interview, as I mentioned. Um, it could also be performances. If your particular theorist also directed something and it was filmed, then you might be able to reference a performance as well. And I've already said that if you use work that's not your own in terms of ideas or images as well, you must acknowledge it. All right, so part two of criterion A, it says that you need to effectively support your work with a range of appropriate and relevant sources, which is what we just mentioned. Um, this is coming straight from the examiners. So I'm going to show you some feedback from the IB on each um, criterion and how well people have done in the past. The comments from the IB, if you have a read of this for the next few seconds for yourself. So what the IB is saying here is that it's not enough just to have a bibliography, especially as a HL student. You need to be consistently referencing any information that you did not know before you started reference, uh, sorry, researching about the theorist and about the theory, you need to reference that. If you found ideas from somewhere else, even if you're paraphrasing, you do need to make sure that you reference. If the IB picks up a 3,000 word report and there's two in-text citations in the whole report, do you think that they're going to believe that you knew all of that and it's all your own work? Absolutely not, okay? And so this is where academic honesty um, and integrity comes in. So as you can see here, the criteria specifically asks you for that. Effectively supporting your work with a range of appropriate sources means that you are effectively and consistently referencing in text as well as in your bibliography. And also it means that you are citing any sort of sources like images that are not your own, okay? Let's take a look at criterion B. So criterion B, as I spoke about in video one, is where you start to record your practical explorations, um, your performance and your production intentions. So what do you intend? What are your um, performance intentions? What is it that you want to showcase? And what do you want the audience to gain from this? And um, this is also where you start to record the development of your performance. So when you're brainstorming your ideas and starting to, I guess, practically explore through rehearsal, this is where you record all these sorts of things. So practical exploration, we're talking about exercises or activities that you um, participated in or used to physically understand the theory. So you may have done that as well in your research project as well, a research presentation. 
you had to practically explore the particular convention and figure out how you could use that in performance. So let's say, for example, that you're doing Augusto Boal and one of his conventions is the idea that you take text out of context. If you decided to do that, you might pick up a piece of um, text from a newspaper and ask someone to say that sentence or you might say that sentence while doing a completely um, juxtaposing action, which is a little bit Brechtian as well. And so taking that text out of context, taking the, the news story and putting it into a completely different scenario, um, you might practice doing that. You could even direct some actors to do that and see how it looks as well, okay? Experimentation. So this is where you need to experiment practically with your theory and see what you can do with it. You might start with one idea for a storyline for your performance and then change it a little bit further, okay, um, and make some alterations or changes to that. So experimenting means that we trial and then we test and it's kind of trial and error. We try something out, we see if it's effective and then we might change something. And then also you should be recording in this section your developing ideas for your solo performance. So you should develop an intention for your solo theatre piece and you need to consider the impact that you want to have on your audience. It's not about just creating the best Broadway performance you ever could. There has to be an intention. There has to be a goal or an objective. And it's important that you write down this goal so that you can see at the end when you're evaluating whether or not you think you achieved it, okay? And you'll be able to know that once you ask questions to your audience and you get feedback from your audience. So. Have a read of what I've said here on the right-hand side. When we talk about intention, we're talking about what will your theatre piece focus on? What do you want to show in terms of this particular theatre theory? How are you going to show it? What is it that you want to say? What's the message you're trying to get across? What's going to happen on stage? Do you have an idea of who you want your audience to be? Do you want a large audience or a small intimate audience? How are you going to stage the piece? So not only are you the performer here, but you're also the director and the designer. And then we talk about the impact. So what sort of impact do you want to have on your audience? And you know this from the CTP, and you know this from your director's notebook. What is it that you want your audience to feel here? What do you want them to think? How do you want them to leave the room? If you think back to the CTP mock that we did in year 11, it was interesting to see what people's reactions to our war CTP performance were. So what do you want them to, to get out of this? What message do you want to stay in their minds after they're finished watching your performance? Okay. And um, it's important to think of how you're going to showcase your particular aspect or convention in performance here. All right. Now, when we talk about criterion B, it's recommended that you describe at least three practical activities that you did. I would say no more than three, actually. So two to three practical activities that you actually did to try and explore your particular convention or aspect. Please don't say that you decided to get fit by running because you were doing something to do with physical theatre. Try and make it a little bit less vague and a little less artificial than that. Okay, so if you're doing something that's heavily physical, then perhaps you need to talk about particular um, activities that you did that helped you to be agile and react with facials and with physicality. So make sure that it is really specific to your actual conventional aspect. So a practical activity is not brainstorming while you're sitting on the floor, writing, planning, watching YouTube or mind mapping. That's not practical. That is theoretical. A practical activity should use your body. It should use maybe your voice, space, objects. It should involve you doing something physically, not just writing with your hand or watching something that's passive. So it needs to be something that you have actively done that is relevant to your theory and to your aspect. You should reflect on each practical activity. You should say, today I tried this out. Or in order to explore this particular part of the aspect, I decided to engage in this exercise. And then you should reflect on what you learned. You should also clearly explain your intentions for your solo piece and you should link them to the discoveries you made during the practical activities. So if you've already set your intentions for what you hope to get out of the performance, 
then when you go and start to practically explore through some kind of practical exercises or activities, you can say, oh, this really helped me to understand this part of my performance intention. Okay, so you're always linking back to what the intention is for your performance. Have a read of this comment um, from one of the senior examiners of the solo theatre piece. So as you can see, this examiner is saying that when we talk about intentions, we're not, taught, we're not asking you to reflect on what you want to learn from the, from the solo theatre piece. We want you to say, what is your intention for this performance? What is your impact that you want to be able to have on your audience? So it's always about the audience impact. And if you think of the CTP and the director's notebook, you should be used to hearing that. What is it that I want my audience to get out of this performance? What do I intend for them to be able to experience? It's not, oh, I want to get a better understanding of this theory. Okay, so let's move on. Now, when you're trying to articulate what your artistic intentions are, here's some good sentence starters, sentence starters that you can use um, to make sure that you're signposting and explicitly telling the IB examiners what your artistic intentions are. So aims, objectives, goals. Notice that some of these have spoken about the audience because the audience are really who you're doing this performance for. So have a read of these, take some notes and pay, pay close attention to the language here. So by you signposting and saying, I want to explore this through this, my aim is for this, I hope to make my audience feel or think or experience, I will aim to or my objective is to, this is how you clearly articulate explicitly what your artistic intentions are. All right. So when we look at criterion B, and we're looking at practical explorations. The criteria says that you need to explain how you practically explored the selected aspect of the theatre theory and how this exploration led to the development of your intentions, which is what we just spoke about. So here's the criteria. Have a close look at what it takes to get a four in this criterion. or to get top marks in this criterion. And you can see there's a difference in the language used for explain versus listing or outlining. Here are some examiner comments as well, HL students. Have a read of these examiner comments. What does it take to do well in Criterion B? So take note of what examiners are saying that students who scored highly, what did they do in Criterion B to score highly? And candidates who didn't do very well, what are some things that you can avoid in your solo theatre piece, particularly for Criterion B? Okay. So in this section as well, you can reflect on feedback from your teacher, from me, um, from someone in the class who's watching, perhaps an SL student. 
um, and explain how that feedback contributed to you perhaps taking a different path or direction or refining something if you thought that perhaps somebody gave you feedback where they said they didn't understand. So this is also part of Criterion B. And the role of having a peer mentor or someone in class to watch you or to engage in something with you during this practical exploration, you want them to ask questions and to challenge you. If something's not clear, they're going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that as well. So it might, it might involve question and answer sessions. Maybe perhaps you perform something and you get them to give you some feedback and then you write down the pieces of feedback that were given to you, all right? Uh, perhaps you have someone in class helping you learn your lines. Perhaps you get some feedback on the text that you have selected um, as part of your solo theatre piece as well, okay? I'll explain for part C, um, choosing a text or creating something original which is part of your performance. Now, solo performance, believe it or not, you're barely going to work in isolation. So when you're rehearsing, you should get feedback from people in the class um, if there are people outside of the class, that's also fine. Um, and they can mentor you or help to, I guess, give you feedback on your work so far, the same as me as your teacher, all right? So you want to be getting as much feedback as possible. Don't just sit at home and work by yourself because then you won't be able to say that you got feedback and that you were able to make changes based on what people had given you in terms of support. Um, key interactions with people in class, they don't have to be part of the IB theatre class, but it's a good place to start. Um, I suggest, and as does the IB, to make sure that you put this in your Part B section um, and address it in the report when you have to report on how this feedback impacted how you developed your piece. So if I gave you feedback and said, well, that's not very clear, what did you do then to go back and make sure that that particular message was clear for your audience? And here we have the second part of Criterion B. And take special note of what the IB is saying here, that a lot of students forget to reflect on the feedback that's given by people from class and by their teacher. So it's not enough for you just to say, I did this and then I did this and then I did this. You should be able to also say, I did this and then I got this feedback and I realised that actually that wasn't very clear or I realised that actually I could take that further. So then I went away and did this, okay? That's called active reflection and evaluation. Okay, so again, an example of student work, let's have a look. So you'll notice that the student reflects on the discoveries that were made during their little workshop session that they had. Instead of just wasting words explaining, oh, this is what I did, they actually go straight in to say what happened during the workshop and, and what happened to push them in the right direction. You'll also notice that in this green section here, um, they talk about the feedback from their mentor or from mentor can be teacher or from other members in their class. So the feedback suggested... Um, my mentor's feedback suggested efforts felt inextricably linked to certain emotions, which led me to ponder exploiting efforts to build a journey of emotion. So perhaps someone might say something that probes you to go in a particular direction. This student as well includes a photo of their theatre journal, so perfect evidence. Evidence is good um, and it's best not to have it's best not to have too many words in tables and photos. This is not like the director's notebook, it's a report, but you can put in small bits of evidence like this to support you, okay, as evidence. And if you have a read, this is a direct note from the IB that says schools must be advised that examiners will not read anything beyond 3,000 words, okay? You also can't put in a whole page um, as a picture of extra writing, okay? because that still means that you're over the word limit. So photos should just be used to support. They shouldn't have extensive words. You're only allowed 3,000 words. Okay, have a look at this reflection as well. I'm not going to read it to you. So you'll notice that they talk about what they were able to gain from the short, the small workshops that they did. 
the practical workshops, what did they actually focus on, but also what suggestions were made. So a suggestion was made and then how did they take that feedback on board? Okay, we're going to move on to your performance. This is the fun part. So when you actually design your performance, you can choose to use text that already exists. You can use part of a script or part of a monologue, for example. Or you don't have to use any script at all or any text, and you can actually create your own performance. You can design your own little short script if you like, okay? As long as it's appropriate to your selected theorist and the nature that you're the nature of the aspect that you're exploring, okay? So you can take something that already exists and just learn the lines and apply your particular aspect of the theory to it, or you can create something completely organic yourself. Now, if you do use um, material that is not your own again you need to make sure that you cite that you should record all decisions that have been made as well in terms of um, any technical or scenic production elements that you want to use when you talk about technical support or when we talk about technical support obviously you're on stage and you won't be able to work your own lighting so you can actually receive support from somebody in the class or a peer mentor to operate your tech equipment for you, which is sound and lighting, okay? But you need to make sure that you have designed these cues yourself and you should be talking about this um, when you talk about your decisions that were made for your performance. So you can't ask someone else to work out the sound and lighting for you. You should be giving them cues of what you want. Now, your work should not damage the environment. It shouldn't glamorize the taking of drugs or violence or hatred, and it should be appropriate as well for a school uh, performance. You are not allowed to have any other performers in your scene or on stage with you. It is a solo performance for a reason, and the video recording has to be a continuous four to eight minutes. It can't be stopped at any time. And I've already mentioned that you are the performer, but you're also the designer and the director, okay? So it's not necessarily assessing your performance skills, HL students, part C. Instead, it is assessing how well you were able to embody the particular aspect that you chose in performance, okay? When we look at part C, the only evidence that the examiner is going to use is the video of your solo piece. For this reason, it's really important that when we film your solo piece that we're filming um, in a way that is obviously um, nice and clear and it's not too far away and we'll make sure of that obviously when we film. So here's the second part of uh, Criterion C. And again, the evidence comes from everything that we see in your video. Now, examiner comments have just said that in the past, um, you don't need to make sure that when you evaluate in part D your performance, minute by minute by minute, you can just choose sections to evaluate, okay? And I'll talk about part D in a second. So there's nothing to write for Criterion C, it's just your performance. Okay, let's move on to Part D. This is the last and one of the most crucial parts of the work in the Solo Theatre Report. So it says evaluate the final presentation of the, of the STP and explain both the extent to which your intentions were met and the impact that they had on your audience. So first off, what you want to do, and if you've done this properly in Part B, explaining what your performance intentions are, then you can refer back to them here in part D, all right? Now, the audience will give you feedback. It's important for you to ask them questions in terms of what they got out of your performance as well. So here's three questions you wanna be asking yourself. Was each part of your intentions met? If not, why not? And are there any changes that you could have made? And then what impact do you think that your piece had on the audience? According to the feedback, we call it a talkback session where you'll ask the audience questions and they might ask you questions or give you feedback. So what impact 
did this whole piece have on your audience? And you're going to be able to understand this more once you have that talkback session at the end of your performance. Here's some comments on what examiners have said about Part D. So most students are generally able to, to score comfortably in the evaluation because they consider the intentions and the impact. But where we start to see weaker reports are when people start to generalise the feelings about the piece or there are quite vague audience responses, like everyone said they loved it and it was a great performance, okay? So this is a critical evaluation of your performance and of your ability to meet your intentions, okay? So there's no need to just sit here and say, and that's why my performance was excellent, because you need to leave that up to the IB. Now, some tips. Ask your audience just two or three questions about how they felt, what was the message they got out of this, um, maybe their understanding of a particular, particular character's actions. Let them talk. You don't have to have 10 or 15 questions prepared. Let them speak freely about what they got in that particular moment, okay? Um, you don't have to lead them to, to basically tell you exactly what you want to hear. If you intended to do one thing but the audience got something else out of your performance, that's okay. You actually want to evaluate that and reflect on that and maybe express what you could do differently next time but also express that, you know what, audience members will all interpret something differently and that's okay. So that's important that you remember this for part D, okay? Now, a note on images. You're encouraged to use images in your evaluation. If you want to describe a particular moment of your performance, you can screenshot part of the video and put it next to the part of your report that you're talking about. Um, if you use images, you must make sure as well that you put a caption underneath to explain how it's relevant. Um, and if you cited the image yourself, I will show you how you need to cite that, okay? And here is the criteria for Criterion D. Have a close look at what this student has done well in Part D. So you'll notice they break down their intentions. This might mean it's easier then for you to ask specific questions to the audience. You'll notice the student actually quotes things that the audience have said and they just put anonymous and the year. And remember, it's okay if you don't fully meet your artistic intentions or all of them. It's okay to reflect on what your audience did get out of the performance as well. You can also include a particular timestamp from the video. If you don't want to include an image, you can also include a particular minute or timestamp in which you're referring to from the video so the examiners know exactly what you're talking about, which moment of your performance video that you're referring to. Okay, and lastly, comments about Part D that I'm going to leave you with. Don't, don't forget to reflect on your learning HLs. It's really important to make sure that you reflect on what you think you might do differently perhaps. Is there another project during your course that you wish you could go back and apply this learning to? What do you know now at the end of your theatre journey having done the solo performance that you think, you know what, I could have used these skills in my research presentation or I could have used these skills um, when writing my director's notebook. So there's a lot to reflect on in this section, okay, because you need to explain the implications that this whole performance and this process has had on your work in theatre as a whole. This is the last part of your journey, so it's important for you to be able to reflect on how it's informed you as a thespian, um, as a director, as a designer as well. And again, we have Part D criterion here. Have a look at how that student does this. Have a look at the parts that I've underlined in purple. This part of the report, I implore you, do not rush it. It is just as important as any other part in this solo theatre piece. So it is expected that Part D should be somewhere between 800 to 1,000 words. It is not just a concluding paragraph. Each of these students talk about the particular skills that they have learned and developed during the STP, and they talk about what they might change as well. 
if they could go back and do it again. So there's lots to talk about in this section. I recommend once you've finished your talk back session with your audience, sit and do a voice recording on your phone to yourself and reflect because it's going to go in one ear and out the other by the time you get home to start writing on this. So start writing this. Okay, just remember these command terms. We want to be somewhere in the green box, at least the yellow box, okay? So if you have a look at this green box, okay, it's the, it's the biggest building block and it's the one that's going to get you the most marks. So detail, detail, detail. You have a copy of this solo theatre piece criteria on Google Classroom that you can refer to at any time. So I hope that's been helpful for you, HL students, and now it's time for you to get creative and to start researching a theorist and to basically begin your last part of IB theatre.